Welcome to the second part of installing EMC Replication Manager from the labs. Again, this is presented in collaboration with Data Center On Demand, www.d-on-d.com. And we are logging into our Windows 2008 R2 server where we have EMC Replication Manager installed. We start by clicking on the console and using our credential to log into EMC Replication Manager. If you are using a demo license, it will actually show you very briefly that you are using an evaluation license that's valid for 90 days. In the window, we go to the right pane and using the Getting Started Wizards, we go by Add Replication Storage and we actually choose a VNX system for both file and block. So first we go to Add File-Based Storage Array uh, with the array name that is the IP address. We use the credential, username and password. Default credentials are NAS Admin, NAS Admin. So you better change that moving forward if you have the default credentials. Next, we are going to add the VNX block. So again, we use the credential, username and password, sysadmin, sysadmin in this case. And again, better change the default password. Then point it to storage processor A as well as storage processor B with providing the IP addresses of both storage processors and click OK. Then it will start discover and update the storage arrays. This will take some time, so this process is a little bit fast forwarded. And what we have to do next is to actually have a look at the snaps. So this is the next wizard we are running through, which is started immediately. So you click on the once discovered system, which is appointed by the serial. And we can actually see the snap cache is in there. The add storage process will then be completed. It will be checked again against whether all specifics are there and then we're good to go. And we can move forward into getting started with it and create an application set. We can give the set a name and can actually browse on our proxy server, which should now be able to see the SQL server, VMware NFS for file-based access and VMware VMFS for block-based access. We're going to do this on demonstration based on blocks. So we're choosing one of the VMFS data stores. And then we check the mark, create a job after this wizard actually closes. Then in the job wizard, we map the application set to a job. We give it a name and we look at the replication source, whether it's a primary storage and we look at the replication technology, be sure to choose the right one here. And we don't select any mount options yet and we do a manual process. We can either have a schedule or a manual process. So then we have a job and we can either choose to run it or simulate it. Since we are convinced that this is well configured, we're going to run that job. And now it will actually assign a snapshot out of the reserved LUN pool to our primary volume that we just snapped. It will first actually snap the virtual machines within the VMFS data store, making them crash consistent on an NTF file system level. As far as NTFS concerned, it is applications consistent up to the file system layer within Windows. And what we then can actually see is a 
association between the primary land to the secondary land and we can see this in EMC Unisphere which will which will I will show up shortly hitting the refresh button browsing to loom one and we see that the snap has been associated with the LUN1 which runs the VMFS data store that we just snapped. So then we can have a look at our job and actually choose to mount it. This will give us two options, either to mount the data stores only or to also mount the data store and the selected or selected virtual disks. So we see all our virtual machines, we can choose one of those virtual machines we're using the VMware Update Manager hard disk one, which is a VMDK file. We choose a location on where to mount it. This will be mounted on the proxy host. In our case, this is EMC Replication Manager. We hit finish and it will actually go and mount the snapshot to both in vCenter as well as on the virtual machine with the respective virtual disks that we chose to go. This process completed successfully so we can go ahead and look in vCenter whether that volume has been mounted successfully go by inventory, browse to data stores and data store clusters and we will see a volume named snap. We can browse it to data store and to compare it to its original volume we also browse to that volume and have a look whether the content is identical or not at least from what we see. This is identical So this comparison has gone well, so we close the windows and go back to our replication manager again. We can now actually emulate a scenario where we choose to delete a virtual disk, a VMDK file. This in a re real world scenario this will be a corrupted VMDK that we can't uh, recover with traditional methods, meaning we have to find another way to actually bring it back to life again. As we can see in Windows Explorer, we can browse to a vir virtual disk that has been mounted and can see all its contents. In order to restore our virtual disk we have to unmount the replica again and we do this by right clicking on the replica and it's going to be unmounted. The restore process uh, you have two options to do this either you have it mounted and you copy the virtual disk from your snapshot to your VMF or original VMFS data store within vCenter or you do it this way as it is demonstrated here because I want to show the capabilities of EMC Replication Manager. Again we have a look at the primary volume, see whether the virtual disk is there or not. No, it's not. So then we go back to EMC Replication Manager and we actually restore from a replica again from right clicking and choosing the paragraph. We can have the restore types, data stores, virtual machines, files within a virtual disk from a, or within a virtual machine. So these are the three options that we are given and we choose to actually restore the virtual disk. So we need to point it to a proxy and then we can start our application session.
The amount of time it takes is really dependent on the capacity of each of the virtual disks that you chose to actually restore. So this process again is a little bit fast forwarded and after some time it completed successfully. This actually ends the successful recovery, ends the session. As you can see, the virtual disk is there again. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.